particular one but that model of guitar is absolutely legendary in the world of boutique guitars and I think the reason is because it's probably one of the most accessible boutique guitars. Um, Tom Anderson is based uh, somewhere in America. Everyone knows American guitars are the best in the world. That's a joke. Um, and uh, I think probably for most people, judging by what I read on the forums, once you've got the Fender Strat, and once you've got a Gibson Les Paul, and once you've got a Telecaster, um, and you want something more, and you're looking for something special, and you're looking for a player's guitar, um, it, you won't go too far before you start looking for a Tom Anderson. Um, I've just done a little bit of playing, I'll do some more playing in a minute, so maybe I'm going to put some words up on the screen that tell you how many minutes forward you have to click from my blah blah blah. But if you've been watching any of my other videos, you know I like to do a kind of forensic uh, review of these things. So let me just tell you a little bit about this guitar. So obviously it's a Stratocaster shape. Uh, it's got a slightly different headstock, etc, etc. The jack is on the side, at the bottom, not on the front. But broadly speaking, uh, the drop top is a kind of Strat. And in fact, they do a thing called a drop top classic. Uh, which is the only difference between this and a drop top classic is that the drop top classic has a pick guard and this does not have a pick guard. So uh, the other thing that's a bit special about this particular guitar, well there's several things that are special about it, but one special thing is that uh, this is uh, what Tom Anderson calls a short, a shorty. So instead of having a 25 and a half inch scale length, this has a 24.75, 24 and three quarter scale length. Um, so basically, it's the same scale length as a Gibson Les Paul. So let's tell you about some of the features. So starting at the headstock end, we've got locking tuners. Uh, these, I think, they are branded as Tom Anderson, as Tom Anderson likes to do. Um, and, but I think they're made by Goto. And um, all the better for it, actually, because uh, Goto have a tremendous vintage looking but actually locking tuner 
and I've got other go-to tuners and I'm, very, I'm a very big fan of them. Uh, there's also small details on this that you won't get on a normal Fender. For example, these posts are different heights so that the uh, string break o angle over the nut is smoother and obviously the guitar stays in tune better when, uh, uh, when you're using it. Well, I say obviously because there's a lot of snake oil in these things so who knows whether that makes the uh, guitar stay in tune. But this guitar definitely does stay in tune. Uh, the nut is a Buzz Fighton tuning system. Uh, so again, just Google it if you're interested. The idea being is that because the lengths of the string are slightly different up here, uh, the guitar gets intonated better. So guitar being intonated is a whole technical world, but it means basically that that D should be more like the same as that D, and the notes that you play all over the neck uh, are the correct pitch. Because tuning on these kind of instruments uh, is actually a compromise. Not that my ears would hear it. Uh, okay, then on the specification of this, I think it says Eastern Rock Maple. So basically, it's a maple neck. Uh, no skunk stripe down the back because it's a slab board that's been stuck on and the truss rod then goes in afterwards. The frets on these, all Tom Andersons have stainless steel frets. Uh, I think I'm a fan of stainless steel frets because there's no reason why you should allow these things to, uh, to wear out. And if stainless steel doesn't wear out, then that's, that's surely good news. Um, some people um, would say that they sound slightly different, but goodness me, you know, there's probably a lot more tone in your fingers and definitely a lot more tone in your pickups and your amp than there are in your frets. Um, the other thing about the fingerboard is all of Tom Anderson's start are a compound radius, so they start at a 12-inch radius at the nut and they finish at 14-inch. Broadly speaking, a 12-inch radius is like a Les Paul. Let's say 10 inches and down is more like a Fender. Um, but of course, there are variations within that. There's lots of different things. 14 inches is very flat. Uh, I think the advantage generally is you can bend uh, without choking uh, the strings. And again, if you're a gear nerd and you're watching this, you probably know that already, but you know, hey ho. This particular one is specced with low rise, what uh, Tom Anderson calls low rise frets. And low rise frets, I would say, uh, having played it for a while and uh, having looked at it, are what most uh, manufacturers would call medium, and maybe they would call them medium jumbo. If you look at the specs and you do some Googling, you find that they're probably about the same width or slightly narrower than what Tom Anderson calls jumbo, but they're significantly lower. And most of these guitars, if you buy one on the second-hand market, they come with jumbos, uh, which is actually what he calls heavy. Um, people like heavy frets on these guitars, I don't. I like medium frets, so, you know, each to, each to their own. Um, the other thing about the neck, there are three neck shapes, standard neck shapes that you can order, but there's also custom depths. And what I mean by that is how deep is the neck uh, behind, uh, you know, where your hand goes, how deep, how thick is it? Now, this one is a 60s taper. 60s taper is off the shelf, they do a uh, even taper, they do a happy medium and they do a 60s, 60s vibe actually I think they call it. And the 60s vibe is the one that's off the shelf, thicker than all of them. So it starts at about, can't remember the exact spec, but let's say 0.8 something of an inch and it ends up at about one inch uh, thick down here. Um, it's on, I mean how does this feel? It feels very, very good. Again, I'm not a big fan of super thin necks, uh, although I've got a couple of guitars with thin necks on that, you know, it's okay, but the, uh, this is slightly chunkier in the hand. This is nowhere near like a 59 Les Paul. Um, not that I ever held a real 59 Les Paul, but it's nowhere near that big Gibson uh, feel, but it is certainly uh, chunky, and I think chunky in a very, very positive way. Uh, on this one, nut width 1 and 11 sixteenths, which is 43 millimetres in new money. Uh, the, the, this is wider, I think the fashion generally is for wider nuts. Most of them come spec with a 1 and 11 sixteenths. You can get 1 and 5 eighths. Uh, the other thing on the, just going back to the ergonomics and the feel of the fingerboard, um, it's, the frets on the end are very nicely finished, they're well rounded. Um, there is a, quite a bit um, 
of rounding over of the fingerboard, uh, which of course makes it a lot more comfortable to play. So coming on to the body, this is an older body uh, with a flame maple top. It's called Trans Black, the colour. It looks like grey. Um, I, have, I have an option with a matching back, so it's got, it's got black on the back as well. Hey, that's a way of getting money out of people by charging them for painting the back of their uh, guitar. Um, normally, I would say guitars with a maple cap on are heavy but it's not a rule and if, if wood is selected carefully it can be less dense and I have to say this guitar I haven't weighed it so I can't tell you but it is pretty normal it's a strat kind of a not a very light strat but it's a medium weight it's nowhere near as heavy as a Les Paul again a traditional Les Paul not a modern Les Paul with all the weight relief in it um, it's got this guitar's got three P90s in it they are Tom Anderson's own made uh, P90s and they're called PQ uh, pickups and PQ Q stands for quiet he says on his website so they are stacked humbuckers however I've got to tell you they make a lot of noise um, if you touch the guitar the noise does go away but I've got elixirs on here so on the wound strings you don't even really you don't get an electrical contact and so it means that they make a lot of noise obviously if you touch a metal part of the guitar the noise goes away I say obviously but then Good news, but if they are, I think real P90s are noisy as hell, and these are actually a little bit no more noisy than I was expecting. So switching arrangements, normally again Tom Anderson has lots of fancy custom switching arrangements. This one is super simple, it's a Strat style five way, uh, no need to explain that. And I have got pull to add bridge, so you can get the seven sounds, you can get a neck and bridge together, and you can get all three pickups together. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Not really uh, a massive, a massive option. The tremolo is uh, what he calls a vintage tremolo, which I think is a bit of a strange thing to say. Call it vintage because vintage tremolos normally have uh, six screws, which is like the PRS style and the Fender style. Uh, this is a two-point tremolo. I'm hoping it's a Goto uh, trem as well. I've got a feeling it is. It's got a nice sort of, it's got a push-in arm, you can adjust it so that it stays in place when you move it, that's good. Um, all the pots, of course, have a lovely feel to them. And if I just show you... The range of the tone control, it's very nicely done. volume if you're into uh, distortion pedal. Um, I think that's it. Oh yeah, there's a little, so there's a small feature that you should mention if, you, if you're looking at a Tom Anderson drop top. The later ones, I don't know the date, but in the last five, six years, this one's in 2011, so that's at least five years, they have a two bolt neck uh, attachment. Really, uh, I'm surprised that Tom Anderson introduced this because guitar players are amazingly conservative in what they think about guitar construction. I can't see any reason why you wouldn't do this, uh, you know, as long as the engineering tells you that it's okay, and I'm sure it does. Uh, what it actually does for you is they, they chamfer off the, um, hang on, I'm going to turn my volume control down because it's driving me nuts. Uh, they chamfer off one side and you get a better access under here. I'm not really gonna be playing much of the 22nd fret. And they also shout for a little bit down here as well. So basically, uh, high, better access to the upper frets than a traditional Strat. Uh, last thing to say is there's a, what they call uh, a natural binding on here. So this is the natural color, um, which has been obviously masked off before they put the color on the, on the front. Uh, so what do we think of the sounds? So I'm playing everything through my Tone King Imperial. I've got a uh, Bogner Blue, which I'll give a, I'll give a try to uh, in a second. I would say, uh, right, let's just play something.
So that was uh, that was middle, that was middle and neck. I mean, P90s. I, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a sort of uh, they they call them kind of slightly woolly. The pickups in this one, by the way, this is a PQ1, but it's a PQ1 minus. So it's the lowest output version of this P90 that is uh, done. This is a uh, reverse route, reverse wound, reverse polarity, so you can get the strapped sound. And then this is a PQ2, which is a higher output for the bridge. The PQ1 minus, it still sounds a bit woolly to me. But obviously... That sort of um, very punchy uh, neck pickup sound higher up, and the the uh, the middle and neck then go a la kind of sweet and stratty. and middle position. Probably sweetness of the bridge and that you might uh, want to get. There's too much of that sort of bridge pickup push. Uh, I say too much, I mean, you know, it's an interesting sound and I'm assuming, you know, I can turn a couple of dials and, and dial it in exactly as I want. I mean, the other thing is probably, yeah, so if I take the, yeah, if I take the volume down just a touch, I get rid of that bite. Obviously, having the treble bleed on the volume is is a, is a big help. Bridge pickup. I'm not a great 
biggest fan of, of bridge pickup. It's the same level of drive as I had on one. Now I'm on a neck and middle. flexible in, in terms of uh, sounds. Okay, well, I think that's, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, what else have I got to say about it? Um, oh, here's a little bit of trivia, except I don't really know the reason. It's got two, uh, it's got two strap uh, jacks on here. It's not really a jack, is it? What's the right word for that? Uh, it's got two, uh, two things for your strap there. Um, when Tom is asked on the forums, he, nobody seems to really know why, but I think the Schecter custom shop shops where Tom used to work uh, have this as well. I mean, to me, it seems obvious that if you put your guitar down on the floor and lean it up against something, which is what people do, um, if you've only got one in the middle, it's going to fall over. And also, so you get all these dings on the bottom. Whereas if you've got two, it's got a good chance of standing up. Of course, you know, uh, if you watch my channel at all, I love uh, playing uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, so let's just see uh, what this can do. Neck pick up. Uh, let's
Uh, but then probably, I haven't spent any time, not probably, I haven't spent any time dialing that sound in and trying to make it right. Uh, do I recommend this guitar? What are my conclusions? I think uh, it is excellent. You know, in my opinion, the primary thing you do when you select a guitar, uh, there are a lot of categories in, in which you're choosing, and one of the highest categories must be the ergonomics of playing. Uh, how does the thing feel to play, and does it help you play more effectively? And this guitar absolutely ticks that box for me. It's comfortable, it's easy to play, I seem to be able to crack licks that I can't normally crack when I'm playing other guitars. Uh, and so, for that reason alone, it, it's absolutely great. Um, when you come down to the hardware and the quality of the wiring and the way the switching works and so on and so on, yeah, absolutely great. Any downsides of this? I like P90s because of that big punchy, you know... I like that, uh, but that's some to the trade-off there is you get a little bit of audibleness down here. And, um, but you know, you can't get absolutely 100% of everything out of, a, out of the pickup. Um, so that's probably the downside is a little bit of fluffy, fluffy wool around the, uh, around the pickups. Otherwise, uh, this is a fantastic guitar. And, uh, you know, these things do command good prices uh, on resale. They hold their value well. And there's a reason the market has realised uh, that, uh, that it's a good guitar. OK, I hope that helps anybody. Comments and questions, very welcome. See you soon.